mind scanner. That's your job. Mental instability is on the rise and you must seek out, analyze, diagnose, and normalize the citizens. You have at your disposal a myriad of tools to help you eliminate the insanity plaguing the people of the structure. Take your time and care for the patient or plow through the insanity and wipe out all traces of their personality. The way you tackle each case is entirely up to you. All the Zygnoka Institute cares about is eliminating the anomalous thoughts in the minds of the citizens. Do a good enough job and you may see your daughter again. For normalcy and the mind. How's it going fellow Geeks Gamer Dad 79 here and today we're going to be taking a look at Mind Scanner on Xbox Game Pass for both console and PC. In my opinion, Xbox Game Pass is hands down the best deal in gaming today. I know some will argue that fact, uh, you know, citing that you don't own the games that you play, but there's nothing really stopping you from buying the game after you've played it for a little while and realizing that you really like it. What initially attracted me to Mind Scanner was the aesthetics and gameplay really reminded me of another of my favorite games and one that I still need to do a review here on the channel, Papers, Please. Mind Scanners reminded me so much of Papers, Please that I actually thought they were done by the same studio. But nope, Papers, Please was designed by Lucas Pope, who incidentally also designed Return of the Ober Den, which is another game I would like to cover here on the channel at some point, uh, while Mind Scanners was developed by Brave at Night Games, uh, whose only other game was Yes, Your Grace. So without further ado, let's get into it. Mind Scanner starts with you finding out that your daughter has been taken by the Zygnoka Institute, which is essentially the government of this world, and placed into quarantine. She has shown signs of a highly contagious mental illness, and while the details are classified, they assure you that she is being well taken care of. Well, what kind of parent would you be if you just accepted that? So you request to visit her, and in a turn of events that shocks absolutely no one, that request is denied with the Zygnoka Institute stating that you must be a mind scanner with a level 3 citizenship to visit her. Care to guess what happens next? That's right, you become a mind scanner. Give this viewer a cookie. At this point, you're directed to start treating the citizens of the structure's mental illnesses. One important note here, the structure is where everyone lives. It's surrounded by these giant walls that keeps whatever's in the outland, well, out. <laughs> there is one person who rules over all who is known as the Constructor, and the whole thing kind of reminds me of the Lorax, even to the point where you question what's outside the wall. All the people that you meet have these interesting stories to go along with each of the mental illnesses that you must treat. Uh, one story in particular stood out to me where the patient was saying that everything that was happening was just a game and the player, which is you, had to stop playing to let them all go free and live their lives. How very meta. I really dug the simple retro art style, which was very similar to Papers, Please. This aesthetic was part of the original appeal of the game to me. I'm a big fan of developers matching the kind of game they want to make to their art style. A lot of time you see developers, they'll try to do too much with the graphics and it just doesn't look right or doesn't match what they're trying to accomplish and it takes away from the overall feeling of the game. This is a prime example of high-end graphics not always equaling a fun game experience. You're usually given a choice of three people at a time who are exhibiting strange behavior and you must deduce if they're sane or insane. Uh, you only have a certain amount of time in a day and you have to travel to each location using up time and give them to what amounts to a Rorschach test. Based on their answers, it's up to you to decide what to do next. Do they pose a threat to the structure and the constructor's way of life? Or are they harmless and don't need to be treated? Either way, your decisions can have far-reaching consequences. If determined to be insane, you have various devices that you can use to treat your patients in what amounts to several different mini-games. Most of them are fun, some can be a bit frustrating, but none are particularly difficult. 
While treating your patients, you can choose to cure the mental illness quickly at all costs, including erasing all trace of their personality in order to earn more money. Or you can take your time, ensuring that they come out on the other side of treatment a better person, but according to whom? However, doing it this way, you use up more of your time. You can also get involved with your patients in uh, interesting ways. <laughs> I won't spoil some of the interactions, but I definitely recommend experimenting with making different choices along the way to see different outcomes. It's not a very long game, so you can play through it multiple times in a short period. There is replay value here, as you can make different decisions each time you play, opening up different gameplay avenues. Just like in Papers, Please, morality will come into play during your time playing the game. Uh, is the structure good? Are they evil? Uh, I guess that all stems from your point of view. Uh, there are groups of people who are trying to overthrow the government and free everyone from the wall, letting in the fresh air from the outside. They claim they can help your daughter. Can you trust them? To be a Gamer Dad game, a title needs to meet three specific pieces of criteria. Let's see if Mindscanner ticks those boxes. 1. Can we finish the game in less than 30 hours? According to HowLongToBeat.com, uh, Mindscanners can take anywhere between around 4.5 to 9 hours to complete. I think that's a fair estimate, and it fit in perfectly with my busy life. Uh, the story wasn't too difficult to pick back up after a couple of days of being away, uh, and the stories of the citizens were always really engaging. 2. Was the game engaging from the start? With a unique setup and an interesting world to investigate, uh, Mind Scanners really had me invested in the protagonist and the surrounding characters, uh, even without any kind of voice acting, and that's a big deal. And three, how difficult is the game? The different mini-games offered a decent challenge without being too frustrating, and that's a big deal for me. Um, I have to enjoy my time with the game, and I really enjoyed Mind Scanners. This game was perfect for my busy life, and it fits all the billets to be a gamer dad game. I don't really have a whole lot of time to wait for a game to get interesting, and mind scanners really grabbed my attention right from the start, and that's vitally important in my busy life. I played both the console and the PC versions of the game, as both were available on Game Pass when I originally played it, and I prefer the PC version as it just felt more intuitive to control. Uh, mind scanners normally goes for around $17 on Steam, and I think it's worth every penny, especially if you can get it on sale. Overall, I really enjoyed my time with Mind Scanners, and I highly recommend that you give it a try, especially if it's still available on Game Pass or even PlayStation Plus if you have that. It's well worth your time. All right, fellow geeks, that is it for today's video. Let me know in the comments section below if you've ever played Mind Scanners and what you thought of it. Like and subscribe if you are new, and until next time, I am GamerDad79. Keep on geeking on.